Welcome to Data Dude Library. In today's video, we're going to talk about Desmos.com. It is one of my favorite resources online. It is free and it's a online graphing calculator. Uh, just to let you know, I am not getting paid by Desmos to make this video. I just truly love this graphing calculator and I am excited to show you what transformations of functions look like using this graphing calculator. We're going to begin by talking about vertical transformations. We'll start with x squared being our parent function. And we're going to add 1 to this function on the outside. Now, one, any number on the outside is going to affect the vertical shift of this function. And when the number is positive, it goes up. When it's negative, it goes down. As you can see, if I add 1, I have the function going up by 1. If we add 2, it goes up by 2. Add 3, it goes up by 3. Same happens when we subtract the number. If we subtract 1, subtract 2, and subtract 3, that fu those functions go down from the parent function. What's really cool about Desmos is you can add a constant and a slider, make, make the constant a slider. And as you can see here, you can manipulate the slider and see really what is happening to the function. If I add a constant to the outside of this function and, the fun and that constant is positive, the function is going to move up. If that, that constant is negative, it's going to move down. The next transformation is a horizontal transformation. Again, we're going to talk about x squared function, but it works on any parent function. So if you add a number to the inside of the function, it is going to move the function opposite of what you would think. You would probably think that adding a number is going to move it to the right, but it's quite opposite in this case. Whenever you add a number to the inside of the function, you're going to move it to the left. So as you see here, you add 1, you add 2, you add 3. All those move the function to the left. Same thing happens when you subtract a number. It's going to move it to the right. And if we subtract 1, it's going to move to the right one. Subtract 2, subtract 3, moves it to the right. And as you can see, with Desmos and the slider option, you can easily see that as the number gets bigger, as it gets positive, more positive, it is uh, going, the graph is going to the left. If the number is negative, the graph goes to the right. So opposite of what you would normally think. It's now time to maybe pause this video momentarily and take a look at this example. Absolute value of x plus 1 and absolute value minus 3. What kind of transformations are going to occur in this example? We have two transformations happening here. We have the negative 3 on the outside, which will make it go down. And we have the plus 1 on the inside of the absolute value, which is going to be make it go left, as you can see here. The next type of transformation is a reflection about either the x or the y axis. A negative symbol will control the reflection of the parent function. If the negative is on the outside of the function, as we can see here in purple, it is going to flip the function over the x-axis. I have a mirror image over the x-axis. If the negative is on the inside of the function, just like here in this case, it is going to flip it over the y-axis. And 
in the case where you have two negatives, one on the inside and one on the outside, it is going to flip it over the x and the y axis. Let's try another example. f of x is equal to negative parentheses x plus 3 and parentheses squared plus 5. In this example, we have three transformations happening at the same time. You have plus 5 on the outside, which means it's going to move it up. We have plus 3 on the inside, which means it's going to move it left. And we have a negative on the outside of the function, which means it's going to flip it upside down or reflect it over the x-axis. last transformation I would like to talk about is stretching of the function. Here we're going to work with the absolute value of x. And notice when we multiply the function by a constant, it's going to affect how wide the function gets. The higher the number, the skinnier the function gets. As you can see here, 2, 3, and 4 makes this v skinnier and skinnier. So the higher the number, the skinnier the function gets. It affects the slope of this function. Now to get this function to be wider, we need to multiply it by fractions or numbers between 0 and 1. The closer the number is to 0, the wider it gets. As you can see here, we multiply it by 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and the closer those numbers get to zero, the wider this function gets. And again, this is greatly demonstrated by Desmos's slider here. And notice the higher the number, the skinnier the function gets. But as soon as we get below one, this function now becomes wider until the point where we reach negative numbers. And as we mentioned before, negative numbers flip the function upside down and then work the same way as before. So now I would like to combine all these ideas into one example. So take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can work this example out on your own. In this example, we have a lot of things going on. We have plus four on the outside which means it's going to move this function up 4. We have minus 2 on the inside, which means it's going to move it to the right by 2. We have the negative on the outside, which means flip upside, upside down or over the x-axis. And we have the 6, which will make it much skinnier than the original function. So let's take a look what Desmos does with that. Notice how exactly what we thought was going to happen to happen. This function is now much skinnier than the original. It is flipped upside down. Its vertex has moved to 2 comma 4. And that is how the transformation occurred. Thank you for joining me. I hope you really enjoy Desmos.com. It's truly a great website to give it a try. I highly recommend it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos. See you next time.